Hey everyone, it's Chastity. Welcome back to episode 21 of Hustle Culture Dropout. I am super excited to be here with you today. I took a couple weeks off um, in preparation for a vacation that uh, my family and I did to the Midwest to see my oldest daughter, Brooklyn, and to spend some time with her. Everything was great. However, she definitely 100% took advantage of having parents there for the week in, you know, stocking her fridge and <laughs> sweeping her floors and taking out the trash. And so we didn't mind if any of you have kids that are in college or just older or uh, young adults, you know that there is this part of you that enjoys being needed in some capacity. But I did take a couple of weeks off because of that, because I was pre prepping for that. And also just because I am really in a season of life right now where I'm sort of sick of listening to what everybody else thinks I should be doing with my life, with my business, and it's gotten to the point where I have sat and thought about what does this next season of my life look like and who actually is going to be in control of that. And I think that one of the things that I definitely have struggled with since starting my own small business. I have a small product-based business of non-toxic refillable candles that I started in April of 2022. So it hasn't even been quite two years yet. Um, and in September of 2023, I launched the podcast. And so my journey in business and through entrepreneurship has definitely broadened and I have a lot of different irons in the fire and I have a lot of different interests and I'm multi-passionate. And so it's very easy for me to, when I sort of go on in these little rabbit holes of digging in and trying something new, and it has always been this way with me in terms of either business, doing something as an entrepreneur, or even just learning a new hobby or moving to a new house. I throw myself in and I do tons of research and I try to consume as much information as I can to become an expert in that topic. And my passion and my enthusiasm drives that. But what inevitably ends up happening is that at some point, I feel as if I've done as much as I can possibly do on my own. And so I start to look for others to guide me, to continue helping me learn. And then what can end up happening, and in my experience, and maybe some of you have experienced this as well, is that then you start putting all of this energy into learning what everybody else is doing and the methods that they're teaching you, right? They're telling you, this is how you should launch your podcast. This is how you should become the best golfer. This is whatever it is that interests you. These are the steps to do it. This is the way to do it. I really have been thinking a lot about this actually since the start of the new year. And it is really me tuning into myself, me looking inward and listening to what I have to say to myself what I believe, what my core beliefs are, what my values are, and then really, really stopping long enough to understand and acknowledge that I probably know best for me. And I'm really at a point where I'm sort of over people telling me this is the path that you should take. In order to be successful, you need to be doing this with your podcast. In order to be successful in your product-based business, you need to be doing this. Now, that is absolutely 100% not to say that people don't know what they're talking about. But sometimes we can completely get like bombarded with it. And we like are following all these different people and they have conflicting advice for us. And so we're trying to do all of these different things. Like we're going down this path and then somebody else tells us to do this. So we pivot and we do this. And when we put all of our 
effort into learning from other people, I think it's easy to put aside and to push aside what we actually know to be best for ourselves. And this isn't this example that I'm using right now is obviously very much related to running a business because that's what I do. But it also has to do with listening to yourself, listening to your body and what you need when it comes to your wellness, when it comes to your mental health, when it comes to relationships and knowing innately what it is that you desire and what you want your life to look like, and then actually being the person who sets out and creates that. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about how, what it means to just like pivot to like put on the brakes for a minute and to stop and to think about like, what is it actually that I want my life to look like? What is it that I am trying to achieve in this life? What purpose am I trying to fulfill and how do I get there? And is it actually my heart's desire? Is it what I truly want to be doing? Or is it something that I think I want because that's what other people are doing? Is it something that I think I want because that's what society has told me and conditioned me to believe? And so I want to just talk about how it's not too late to rewrite your story at any moment of your life, whether you're 21, whether you're 41, whether you're 61, whatever it is, it is not too late for you to sit down and sort of take stock of your life and think, this is what's working. This is what's not working. This is where I need to have some change. This is what I think is going really well for me, but maybe I want to tweak it a little bit. Or this is like, this part of my life is absolutely like, I'm fucking killing it and I don't need to do anything with that. And that can happen at any moment, but you really need to get down like with yourself. Like you really need to dive in and turn inward and listen to what it is that you truly want and know yourself. I think so often we sort of find ourselves like in the world, right? Like we're just like in this world. And we're like, hmm, like, why am I doing this? What am I doing? Like, whose dream was this? And maybe it was your dream at one time and it's just like not like your jam anymore. Also totally okay. So I just want to talk a little bit. This has been on my heart. This has really, really come into, it's become very apparent for me lately that I have spent a lot of time over the course of the last like nine to 12 months listening to what other people think I need to be doing with my business. And I've also done that in the past, like just in my personal life. Like I've listened to other people's advice. This is like the type of mom you should be. This is the type of wife you should be. This is what it means to be a good mom. This is if you do even want to be a mom, like who, like, did I wake up one day and think I truly, my true calling is to be a mom and this is what I want to do? Or did like society just say like, this is, this is what people do, right? Like, this is what women do. This is what you do. You become a parent at some point in life. And I've just been thinking about that so much. And so I want to talk about that a little bit. I had this conversation with one of my best friends today about how in terms of becoming a mom, right? And how there are so many young people, my own daughter included, who has said, you know, like, I I don't know if that's what I want not necessarily just like right now, but potentially ever. And of course, in the back of my mind, when my own child is saying this to me, I have a little like pity party because I'm like, like, I don't really give a crap what you want. Like I would really like grandkids someday. So, so let's push aside what you think you want for your life. And let's like really listen to what I want. And I mean, how unfair is that? Like how unfair of me to put what I want out of like for my own life and make my daughter responsible for that. And so I'm not saying this is what's happening with her or what's happening in my life. I think in the back of my mind, I'm always like, when she gets a little bit older, obviously she's only 23, you know, maybe she'll change her mind and maybe she will. But here's the thing is that 
I need to accept the fact that that might not be her path and that's okay. Because I think for many people, for many, 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 many freaking years, women have been told, this is what you need to do. This is what it looks like to be a good mom. This is what it looks like to be a good wife. This is what it looks like to be a good woman. And you don't even make those choices consciously for yourself. They're just ingrained. They're conditioned into you. And one day you just wake up and you're like, Does, is this really even like what I want to be doing? And it, that can go for any, like that can go along with like going to college or going to trade school or not doing either one of those things, maybe becoming a stay at home parent. And wondering like, are those choices that you're actually making for yourself or are those choices that other people are making for you? And once you realize, I think we have all been in this situation at some time or another where we have allowed outside influences to come in and influence us and probably play a pretty big role in our life. And then, like I said, one day we wake up and we're like, who the fuck am I? What am I doing here? Like, who are these children that like legitimately want me to feed them all, all the time, all of the hours of the day, they eat all of the food, they do all the things, they, they are all over the place. And we think to ourselves, like, is this really the life that I wanted? And I have been getting very, very real about that lately with myself. And it really has nothing to do absolutely with my personal life. But it has to do with who I am as a person and what I'm putting out into the world and who I am representing and understanding that the person that I want to represent the most is myself. It's what I believe. It's the control that I have over my own life. And in order to have the biggest impact on the world and on people around me, I really have no other choice but to be myself and to write my own story. And that the thing that I want to emphasize emphasize to all of you is that that doesn't mean that your story had to start when you were 20 years old. I am 48 years old. And I promise you, I can tell you with 100% certainty that what I am doing today in my life will probably not be the same thing that I am doing in a year, two years, three years, five years, 15 years from now, because of the fact that I am always constantly learning. I love to learn new things. I love to explore new things. I love to discover new things. And I like new challenges. That's, that is what I know that I like to do. It's who I know that I am. And for a very, very long time, I sort of like shit on that side of me because I thought it meant I was flaky. I thought it meant I didn't finish things. I thought it meant that I didn't follow through. And I was told that. I was told that by people who were probably very well-meaning at the time and probably didn't know any better for themselves that hearing those and, and hearing the way that they would phrase those sediments to me really was in a negative, it had a negative connotation attached to it. And so I have spent years and years and years trying to put myself in this like little box and saying like, I need to be like the, I need to follow the traditional path, path. I need to follow the traditional path and I need to do things the same way as everybody else does them. And I need to do what everybody else expects me to do. And so understanding that it's really hard to have that foresight when you're in your 20s, right? You're still very much trying to figure out who you are. But if you're 20 years old or if you're in your 20s or you're in your early 30s or really wherever you are in life, but specifically if you're younger, I want you to hear me. I want you to understand that you have complete 
and utter control over every single decision that you make. And it can be driven by what you really desire for yourself. I encourage you to get very, very raw and real with who you are and what you want out of life. And I want you to think, is this, am I, cre- am I on the path to make that happen? And everybody, and if you're not understanding that that's okay, because you can make those changes. The same goes for you if you're in your 40s or your 50s or your 60s. It's not too late to change it. So in this episode, we're talking about how you basically can hit that refresh button on your life. Maybe you're feeling stuck in a rut. Maybe you have a job that maybe at one time that job like lit you up, but it is literally draining your soul or it just doesn't work for you anymore. You're on a path that just doesn't excite you anymore. And instead of like looking at it from the standpoint of, well, this is what I chose for myself. So I cannot change my mind. And this is what I'm stuck doing. So many times I feel like people, and I'm not saying like we have invested a lot. You go many, many, many of my friends and people in my life and even my my own children have gone to school thinking, this is what I want to do with my life. And then you come out the other side and you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't really think that's for me. Or you spend 15, 20 years investing in a career only to realize like, this is just not lighting me up anymore. This doesn't make me happy anymore. Maybe the dynamic of that job has changed. Maybe the environment has changed. Maybe some outside factor has come into play that's made it more difficult for you to maintain your happiness. But the fact of the matter is, is that we are not who we were when at 40, that we're not the same person as we were when we were 20. And so it's only natural for us to maybe want to discover new things or find new things that excite us and sort of get out of that rut that we're sort of stuck in. And the fact of the matter is, is that you can rewrite your story and it's never too late to do that. And so part of Part of that mindset comes from really like stepping back from hustle culture. This idea that in order for us to be successful, in order for us to be like, have I've arrived and I've made it and I am so happy and I am so blessed. And because I've done X, Y, and Z and I have X, Y, and Z and hustle culture glorifies that it glorifies the grind. It glorifies the all nighters. It glorifies the constant struggle. But what if that is actually what's holding you back? What if we actually change our mindset and instead like understanding that we've been conditioned to believe that success looks a certain way and the relentless pursuit of achievements and external validation is actually what is making us unhappy? What if success wasn't how much money was in our bank account or it wasn't the accolades that we received from work, or it wasn't the recognition that we got from our boss. What if actual success looked different for us? At the end of the day, what if it had nothing to do with any of the things that we've been chasing? And it actually comes from being authentically yourself, living authentically living with purpose and actually following your own compass, actually thinking to yourself, you know what? I I don't think I'm a person who's meant to go to college. Like I know that every person before me in my family has done that. I know that every person in my family is a doctor or a lawyer or a nurse or an entrepreneur or whatever it is that they are. And the expectation is on you to do the same. But that the fact is, is that you're a different person 
than all of those other people in your family. So to think that the dream that maybe your great, great, great grandfather had is the same dream that you have for yourself is pretty unrealistic when you actually sit and think about it. But accepting that and admitting that and being okay with that can be really, really hard. I had that same experience in being a stay-at-home mom, you know, way back in the day when my kids were little and I had my kids, I, I, I did want to be a stay-at-home mom, but I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom because I felt like that was the only way I could be a good mom. I felt like that was the only way I was going to actually be validated as a, as a mom, that if I wanted to be a good mom by society standards, I needed to stay home with my kids. And for many years, I mean, I loved being home with my babies. I loved having those memories with them and doing those things. And I would never, ever trade that for, for anything in the world. But inevitably what ended up happening to me was that I allowed everybody on the outside to decide and to tell me what success looked like for me. And I listened to all of that, even deep down inside when I knew I was starting to feel something different. I was starting to feel like I wanted something more or I wanted to reconnect. I wanted to get back to that person who I was before I had kids. And I wanted to explore the interests that she had, but I didn't think I could do that. And so I just kept putting it off and putting it off and I kept burying her and I kept burying her until I woke up one day and I was divorced and I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what to do with myself because I hadn't, I hadn't nurtured anything within myself other than being a mom. And I knew that I was a really good mom as much as a mom can think that they're a really good mom, right? Like you can say you're a really good mom, but at the back, in the back of your mind, like at least like 75% of the time you're, you're like, am I a really good mom? Like, am I really doing this shit right? Like, am I, or am I totally screwing them up, right? For, for the rest of my life. So I, I recognized that I was a good mom to, I was doing the, the best that I possibly could. And I was completely devoted to my kids, but I had completely let myself go in terms of knowing who I was and like listening to my own authentic self. And the only way that I actually was able to kind of reconnect with myself was through a forced circumstance of being divorced because I had no other choice. And so I think to myself all of the time, like as hard as it was to have to go through that divorce and to have to experience that and the hurt and the pain and all of the things that come with that, I think to myself, like, would I ever have stepped out and stepped away and reconnected with myself if I hadn't been forced to do that? And obviously, I don't want any of you out there who are feeling stuck or feeling like you're not seen or you're not living like your most authentic life. I don't want you to feel that way. I don't want something to happen to you to where you wake up one day and you're like, well, now I have no other choice but to do this and then realize how, maybe how much happier you would have been if you would have just taken some steps earlier to actually start listening to yourself and living your, your, your story, living the true story that you want to, to live. And the truth is rewriting your story, it requires a shit ton of courage. Like that is the biggest thing. Fear is literally the biggest thing that holds us back and that keeps us stuck because right. It's, it's easier to just be comfortable. It's easier to just deal with what, you know, even if you hate it, like going to a job every day that does not fulfill you anymore, doesn't make you happy and is not serving you is literally easier then going through all of the steps to try to find something new, right? The same with a relationship. You're in a relationship that it doesn't serve a friendship or a romantic relationship, whatever it is, but doesn't serve you anymore. It, it, something has happened and it's just not 
working. And instead of like going through all of the hard stuff to either make it work, which might mean, you know, therapy or counseling, or if it's maybe it's a toxic friendship and it's just not serving you anymore. And instead of being like, I don't want that in my life anymore, I'm going to step away from that. You continue to show up and you continue to participate in that relationship, even though it literally sucks you dry. And because it's easier. It's easier than going through like the emotion of having to maybe have a conversation with that person, or it's, it's hard to actually like break that friend. Even if that friendship's not serving you, maybe it, I mean, it's hard to walk away from things, right? So fear is what keeps us stuck. And that you, so you are going to have to have the courage if you want to rewrite your story. And that means you have to admit that you're unhappy. That's also really hard for us, especially when the path or the situation or the position that we're in is something we've actually chosen for ourselves. Like, well, I chose to be in this marriage or I chose to live in this house. I chose this career path. I chose this friend. It's hard then to say, you know what, this is not working out because we immediately think that means that we were wrong, right? It means we look at it like, well, now I've made a mistake and God forbid we make any mistakes. It means we have maybe chosen unwisely and that's also hard to admit. So the you have to go forward with courage and you have to admit that you're unhappy and you have to really start challenging like your own personal limiting beliefs that you can't do it, that it's too late to do it, that you've invested too much time, anything that's limiting you from doing whatever it is that your heart desires. That could be money. That could be responsibilities. That could be time. I'm not saying that it's going to be an easy journey. I'm just saying you can do it. It is possible, but it doesn't come without hard work and it doesn't come without consequences and it doesn't come without probably some sacrifices. And also just like the discomfort of change is just, it's really, it can be really, really debilitating and it can be really crippling. And sometimes then that's just easier. So it's just easier to like stay stuck. Right. And you could also maybe have some outside influences that really are pressuring you and potentially facing like the doubt that you might get from those people, people saying to you either that you can't do it, it doesn't make any sense to do it, it's crazy, I can't believe you would give up the stable career that you have to like pursue travel, or I can't believe you would walk away from this relationship because it looks so great on paper and to do something different, right? And so you might be met with some resistance from other people in your life, and that can also keep you stuck in a situation or on a path that really isn't serving you anymore. So how are we going to like overcome that? How do we actually start rewriting the story? And you really need to start with identifying your why. What truly sets your soul on fire? What kind of life would you like to make? And wake up to each day and be completely fucking obsessed with. Like, if, like, dream big here, people, right? Like, dream big. It, if not, there were no, there was nothing holding you back. There was nothing restricting you. Money wasn't a, of any importance. Time didn't matter. Responsibilities didn't matter. Take some time. If you are feeling stuck in your life and like, just do that little, just do a little exercise where you write down, what would you be doing? What would truly at this moment in your life, at this season in your life, what would truly be lighting you up and what would make you feel completely excited and fulfilled? And when you take some time to do that, while you're doing that, write down three core values and three experiences that you've had that have brought you the most joy. And 
once you've done that, look at that and start to identify some common themes that might actually reveal to you where you might want to go, where you might be trying to go, where your heart might be leading you. I promise you there will probably be, you probably already know it. I feel like for me, a lot of times I know what I want to do. I know what I need to do. It goes back to that, goes back to what I was talking about earlier when I was talking about listening to yourself. I think as human beings, we innately know what we need to do and what we need to do to get there. We might not have every step planned out. We might need some help. We might need to rely on some resources, but I think deep down inside, we all know what our heart desires and what we want to do to make the biggest impact and what's going to make us feel the most whole as a person. And listening to that and comparing that with what it is that maybe you've written down, if you've taken the time to do that little exercise, I think would be very, very incredibly eye-opening for you to actually think about, this is what keeps kind of coming up for me. This is what I keep leaning towards. And then reading what you've written down and see how those things align. Do they align? And and again, this this is doing this right now doesn't mean that you're like writing your story that's going to be from here to the eternity for you, right? This is a season of your life. We are in a season. Every single person who is out there listening to this right now, you are in a season of your life. This season is going to pass. You are going to be a different person. Yes. Do I think that people have the same initial core values and we carry those around with us from year to year, season to season? Yes, absolutely. 100%. Do we have personality traits? Yes. All of that is obviously going to stay the same, but our experiences from day to day change us. They make us grow. They make us observe the world differently. They make us react to the world differently. And so what's happening right now in your season of life, while it might seem really, really daunting and frustrating, and maybe it's not a great season for you right now, and as cliche as this is going to sound, it's going to pass, but cliches are cliches for a reason, usually because they're true. That also is the same thing about what's fulfilling you at the moment, what's making you happy, what's lighting you up, what's bringing you joy. That is, a, it's a season of your life. It's going to look different in another few years. And that's going to be because of the experiences that you're having in this season. And so whatever you're writing down and whatever is just lighting you up right now, understand that this is not set in stone. What we're doing right here, what we're learning about ourselves right now is not something that we need to like become married to and never veer away from, from here on out. This is just us looking at where we are in life and understanding that if we feel stuck, if we feel unhappy, if we feel like there is something that we want to change or pivot away from, or if we want something, if we want to fill ourselves up with something different, if we want to bring something else into our lives, it's okay to do that. There's literally nothing wrong with that. In fact, I think that people who do that have the absolute richest lives because they're learning new things every day. They are experiencing new things. They're trying new things. They're discovering new things. And I'm just at a point in my life where I'm like, hell yeah, that's what I want. That is what I want. That is the kind of person that I want to be. I want to be the kind of person who experiences new things and has new interests and new passions and new desires and who like, yeah, maybe I don't become an expert in that, but maybe I learn enough about it to be like, that was awesome. That was awesome to experience right there or enough, learn enough about it to be like, no, that wasn't for me, but it was kind of cool to figure that out, Right. Figuring out who you are, what makes you happy, who are you at your, at your core. And remember that your why is the driving force behind the story that you're trying to write or you're trying to rewrite. It's the North Star that is going to guide you 
through all of like the inevitable challenges and roadblocks that are going to come with stopping and starting over. So once you know your why, it's time for you to start going after that. It's time to start building your new chapter, write your new chapter. It does not have to be this giant leap of faith. I am not saying that if you're, you know, if you are really not enjoying the home that you're living in right now, that you sell your home and put it on the market tomorrow and you move away and you live in a tent alongside of a river, you know, with Sasquatch roaming in the background. Literally not what I'm saying, unless that's your jam, which is totally fine. I will say there's some intrigue there with little Sasquatch, but it doesn't have to be this giant leap of faith. Okay. It can be a small little step forward on a different path. So you're going to set a small achievable goal to keep you motivated and to keep you moving forward. You want to break it down. You want to break down what it is that you're trying to achieve. What change are you actually trying to make? You also need to find some inspiration. This is where I get a little crazy, right? That I talked about earlier. I'll start to find some inspiration and I find so much freaking inspiration that I just start doing what all of the people are doing, right? I start doing what everybody else is doing. Like, I'm like, well, this person is, is, you know, hiking 48 miles a day with these types of hiking boots. And so that's what I need to do and whatever I'm saying, find inspiration, surround yourself with positive influences podcasts, books, mentors, coaches, influencers, whoever it is, whatever you're consuming, wherever you're getting the knowledge to learn about this, that from people and things that align with your values. This does not mean go all in and listen only to them and stop listening to yourself. It just means to look towards more positive influences. Again, with that are that are aligning with your values and where you want to go and where what path you want to take and create for yourself. You want to embrace your support system. So do not be afraid to ask for help. F- find friends, talk to friends and be like, you know what? I really you have accountability, right? You have accountability for a reason. You talk to your friends about, you know, I'm really wanting to learn this new hobby. I really want to figure out how I want to figure out how to fly a hot air balloon. And of course, you know, people are going to be like, what the hell? Like, that's crazy. But then you're going to also have some people that are like, that is amazing. This is incredible. You know what? I just was like on the internet the other day and I was, I got this article in my email inbox and they were talking about X, Y, and Z. And here you go. Talk to people. You never know what experiences or what connections they might have that can actually help you and lead you down the path that you want to go down. So talk to your friends, talk to your family. There's online communities that you can join. I mean, you do a little search, you do a little Google search for like, you know, how to fly a hot air balloon. And the next thing you know, you're connected to like a forum or a Reddit or something that is giving you all of these people who have done this before you. And And you're going to lean into that. You're going to lean into that. Again, we're not putting all of our eggs in that basket and only listening to those people. We want to listen to ourselves also, but we can rely on them for, for information. We can rely on them for encouragement and to get some inspiration from them. So remember that writing your story is a journey. Okay. It is not a destination. I have talked about that all year long, going back to my sourdough journey, which is still going on by the way. It is starting over in anything or taking an unconventional path, rewriting your story, starting over, pivoting, whatever you're doing. It is a journey. It is not, you're not going to get there tomorrow and then be like, well, that didn't work out. Here I am. I don't like it. That was a giant waste of time. It is a journey. It's going to take some time. Again, it is not going to come without challenges. It is not going to come without probably some setbacks and probably some resistance. But the person you need to be listening to is you. What you're trying to do here is live your most authentic life, to go after what excites you, to go after what 
fulfills you and fills you up. And so the person you need to listen to the most is yourself. And there's going to be bumps and there's going to probably be a lot of freaking self-doubt because we're humans. That happens. Don't give up. Don't think it can't happen. Don't think you're in too deep or you're too far gone or you've invested too much to make a switch. And especially when it seems like, ah, it would just be so much easier to go back to that old path. Like I'm really tempted by that. It's okay. You might be tempted by it. Be kind to yourself. Learn from the setbacks. Keep focusing on the amazing life you are trying to create. Keep focusing on what version of you is going to be the best version of you, the most authentic version of you, and be honest about that and then continue focusing on creating that. And once you sort of take control of that and you accept that and you own it, It is incredibly empowering. You have the ability to craft this life that actually brings you joy and purpose and a sense of fulfillment. You need to dig deep. I needed to grab some courage and you need a little clarity and you need to focus in on what that looks like for you. And you're probably going to have a little bit of rebellion in you and you need to go after that. And I promise you, if you do that, you are going to wake up one day and be like, I am completely fucking obsessed with my life. Thank God I get to live this life. Thank you guys so much for being here. I would love to continue the conversation with you, and I invite you to join my weekly newsletter. It is called The Weekly Unwind, and you can sign up. I will link it here in the show notes. You can find a link to it on my um, website at chastitycampbell.com. And as always, if you loved this episode, I encourage you to listen to all of the other episodes previously and to subscribe. And I would love, love, love if you would share this and you would review and you would leave me a five-star rating. I promise you it, it makes, it just makes my heart, it makes my little heart sore and I love it. And sharing with your friends, join the email list, visit the website, read the blog, hang out with me on socials. I absolutely love connecting with you guys. I love building this community and I will talk to you guys next week. Have a great week. I am always cheering for you. All right. That's it for this episode of Hustle Culture Dropout. I'm your host and real life bestie, Chastity Campbell. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Leave a five-star review if you loved it. Don't even bother if it's anything less than five stars. You can also follow me on socials at Chastity Campbell Co. Or check out the website at chastitycampbell.com. Until next time, here's to living our most radically authentic and unapologetic lives. Thanks for listening.